Here we go. All right, today we are talking about derivatives using the chain rule. The chain rule is a wonderful thing because it is a method of taking derivatives to make problems that were really, really difficult much, much easier. Okay? Now, let me define it in words first, then we're going to do a little bit of review, and then we're going on to what exactly the chain rule is and how it works. Okay? The chain rule is a method for finding derivatives. Or composition of functions. Or a composition of functions. And that's the situation of f of g of x. And we did that last year in pre-cal. What I want to do before we go into the derivative part, I want to talk about what composition is because I'm not really sure who your teacher was when you first learned this, if you even remember what it is. So let's take some review, first of all. I'm going to give you a function, f of x equals, uh, let's say, the cube root of x and g of x equals x plus 5. Do you remember how to do f of g of 3, for example? f of g of 3. Let me see a show of hands real quick. How many of you think you know how to do this problem? Quite a few of you. Okay. For those of you who haven't seen it in a while or you don't remember, or actually let me ask one of you. Who, who thinks they can tell me what to do? All right, go for it, Myra. Um, plug in the 3 to the g of x. To the g of x function. Yes. So when you plug 3 in here, you get 3 plus 5 is 8. And you, then you plug the 8 into the f function. So then plugging the 8 into the f function gives me the cube root of 8, which is what? 2. Does that make sense? Okay. What if I had said g of f of... Uh, let's say 64. Where does 64 go first? Yeah. Into f. So 64 into f would be the cube root of 64, which is 4. So that turns into 4. You bring down the g and then plug it into the g, which makes it equal to 9, right? Okay, those are the easy ones. Now let's take it a step up. What would f of g of x be? What would f of g of x be? Who thinks they know the answer to this one? f of g of x. Ooh, we've slept since then. Brittany, go. The cube root of x plus 5. And how did you come up with that? Um, I went to g of x, and the y value of that is like x plus 5. Mm -hmm. You do f of x plus 5 and fill in x plus 5 for x. Right. So g of x, g of x, you, when it was a number, you just put the number in there. But there isn't a number. It's an x. So we just take the whole thing and put it in the parentheses. And then we put that whole thing into f. So when you put the whole thing into f, that x is replaced with this. And that's what gave us that. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, let's take it a different direction here. I'm going to give you a function that has already been put together. f of g of x is 5x minus 4 cubed. Can you tell me what the two functions were that combined to give me that one? Think about that for a minute. This is a problem we don't do in pre-AP, and I kind of wish we did. What were the two functions that combined to give me that? 
Hmm. The easier way to start this is to start with the inside function. That's g. What do you think the g function is? 5x minus 4, probably. I would agree with that. g is the inside function, so g goes there. Now, what did we do with that 5x minus 4? And it became, we raised it to the third power, right? So that means that f of x is going to be x to the third. So we took that x out and put the 5x minus 4 in its place. Okay? How many of you think you could do one of those yourself? A couple of you? About half of you. Let's try another one. f of g of x equals x squared minus 6x to the fifth. f of x, g of x. Okay. If you know how to do it, try it. If you're not sure, just wait a second. Okay. Let's see. Aaron, tell me what you got for g of x. g of x, I got x squared minus 6x. x squared minus 6x. Very good. And Alex, what would you get for f of x? x to the fifth power. Exactly. Very good. Okay. Are you getting the hang of this? These are the kind of functions we're going to be doing. And you've got to be able to see this in order to be successful in what we're doing today. But we're not going to call these f and g. We're actually going to call them the outer function and the inner function. So we aren't going to concern ourselves, is it f of g of x or g of f of x? We don't really care. We just care which one's on the outside and which one's on the inside. Okay. So here is the chain rule itself. Here is how you take the derivative of something like that without having to foil the whole thing out. d over dx of f of g of x equals... Okay, before I tell you what it is, this is the day that I fell down on the job and I did not bring the visual aids that I wanted to because I forgot about it over the three-day weekend. Okay, and I hate to say I want you to imagine eating candy, but I'm actually going to have to. How many of you like Skittles better than you like M&Ms? Anybody? Okay, I don't care for Skittles at all. I like the fruity flavors. I don't like the stickiness of the insides, but anyway, okay. An f of g of x, or a composition of functions, is a lot like a Skittle, or a plain M&M, or a peanut M&M, okay? Because it's a function within a function. It's chocolate within a candy shell, or it's fruity center within a candy shell. You see what I'm saying? Or if you want to think about inception, it's a dream within a dream, a function within a function, okay? Now, when you take the derivative of a composition, it's kind of like eating that candy. So I want you to admit it for a minute, and I'll, if, if y'all are quiet and good, I'll bring you some tomorrow. Okay, I want you to imagine putting either a Skittle or an M&M in your mouth and just letting it dissolve, okay? That's the process of taking the derivative. When you put one in your mouth and you just let it dissolve, what goes away first? The outside. The outside. And does the inside dissolve at the same time? Not really. It make it like chocolate. The chocolate gets softer, but it doesn't dissolve. So that's the derivative of the outside. It's like eating the outside. The outside goes away first, but the inside, the g of x, remains untouched. f prime of g of x. The outside is eaten, but the inside remains untouched. But then eventually the candy shell goes away, right? And then the inside dissolves as well. So that is like multiplying by g prime of x. Because g prime, remember, is the process of eating the M&M. Okay? So you eat the outside and the inside stays left alone. And then you eat the inside. Okay, so let's write this more in mathematical terms. If we call this the outer function and the inner function, outer and inner. Okay, so when you take the chain rule, you take the derivative of the outer function first, and you leave the inner alone. That's the key. A lot of people turn at the same time. You can't do that. You take the derivative of the outer, you leave the inner alone, and then you multiply by the derivative of the inner function. And once you've done this a few times, it'll just become second nature to you. Okay. 
Okay? So now, let's try one of these, a simple one. Let's take the function at the top that we had, y equals 5x minus 4 to the third. We just did that one in the f of g of x lesson part. Before you do any of these, I want you to write down what is the outer and what is the inner. We're going to write it slightly different than the way we wrote it before. The inner is going to stay the same. What is the inner function again? 5x minus 4. Write it in a parenthesis. Okay? What is the outer function? What is the f of x? It's x to the third, right? But we're not going to write x to the third because that can get kind of confusing. We're just going to write parentheses to the third because we really don't take the derivative of that x. We take the derivative of the parentheses. Okay? So now, using the chain rule, y prime equals... First thing we're supposed to do is take the derivative of the outer function. How do you take the derivative of something to the third power? Three, three something to the power of what? Two. two. So that's what we're going to write. Three parentheses squared. Okay? Now, what goes in the parentheses? G of x, the inner function. Not its derivative, it. Exactly. So we write 5x minus 4 right there. We just copy it down. Times, and then we take the derivative of the inner function at the end. What's the derivative of the inner function? Just 5. We write 5 down. Okay, now let's talk about cleanup. Now, I see, I don't want to square that out because there's nothing to add to it. It's already factored. Let's leave it alone. But I can combine in the 3 and the 5. Agreed? So that would be 15, parentheses, 5x minus 4 squared. That's the answer. Now, how else could I have taken the derivative of that thing without the chain rule? I could have multiplied all that out. That would not have been fun. This is much better. That's why the chain rule is so nice. You don't have to multiply. What if that had been the seventh power? Yuck. Would you really want to multiply all that out before you took the derivative? I wouldn't. It takes too long. So that's how you do the chain rule. Do you think you could do one that level of difficulty? I think so too. Okay, let me give you one to try. So let me go to the next page. Y equals. Uh, this one's a little trickier. I'm going to go ahead and give you the other one we did in the beginning of the notes. X squared minus 6X to the fifth power. You try it. Write down what the outer and inner functions are. Take the derivative using the chain rule. So y prime equals, whoops, outer, inner. So 5, blah, 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 4, 2x minus 6, x squared minus 6x. So y prime equals... 10x minus 30 times x squared minus 6x to the fourth. Now, I had one student who noticed that, what can you factor out of that first parentheses? Oh, you can pull a 10 out, can't you? x minus 3, x squared minus 6x to the fourth. Oops, that's supposed to go there. Now, does it really matter? If you're going to set that equal to zero, it really doesn't matter. I like this. This is the most factored way it can be. Okay, But if you left it like the one above it, that's okay. That's fine. I went around and told you that was right. Okay. Now, like I said, we're just scratching the surface, folks. They're getting harder. The square root of x squared minus 3x plus 5. We'll do this one together. The process isn't hard. The cleanup's a little bit weird. Okay? Now, anytime we've had something that we've had to take the derivative of that was in a square root, I've always had you rewrite it. How did we rewrite that? To the one-half power. So we're going to write x squared minus 3x plus 5 in parentheses to the one-half power. First thing. Now we're going to do outer and inner. Eventually, you won't have to write down outer and inner. Some of you may be already at that point, and that's okay. 
but you better be sure that you never make a mistake. What's enter? X squared minus 3X plus 5. And what's outer? Parentheses to the 1 half. Very good. Okay. Now we're ready to take the derivative. Y prime equals outer first. How do you take the derivative of something to the 1 half? 1 half parentheses to the negative. negative 1 half. Okay. And what goes in the parentheses? The inner x squared minus 3x plus 5. Then, I kind of gave it away. We're not done yet, are we? <coughs> What's the derivative of the inner? 2x minus 3. Now, this one's going to be a little bit different cleaning up. I'm not going to distribute the 1 half in there because it doesn't go and give me pretty numbers. Okay, But here's what I am going to do. What does that negative mean about the way it's supposed to look when I'm done? bottom of a fraction. And one half is a fraction anyway, so that means I better draw a fraction bar to clean this up. So I'm going to draw y prime equals draw a fraction bar. Put the one over the two, one half. Because this big parentheses is to a negative power, it goes on the bottom, and how does it look on the bottom? It's in a square root. So big square root, x squared minus 3x plus 5. Its power is 1, so I don't need to write it. It's root is 2, so I don't need to write that either. Now, what about that 2x minus 3? Why do you, how do you know that? It's a positive exponent. It's a power of 1. So it goes on the top. So we put in the parentheses 2x minus 3, just like so. That's done. All right. Next one. y equals 2 over x squared plus 7x minus 1 to the third. Move it up. Nope. Not on the test. You will not have practiced this enough to be proficient at it. Straight line motion? Yes. I would expect it. Okay. This is a quotient problem which usually lends itself to the quotient rule. And you could do quotient rule to this, but chain rule is a lot easier. How could I write this as a chain rule problem? Anybody have an idea? Well, there's an easier. Yeah, let's let's not leave it as a fraction though. What I can bring this up and make it a what power? Negative. Negative. So before I start, I'm going to write two parentheses x squared plus seven x minus one to the negative three power. And the outer and the inner. The inner is x squared plus 7x minus 1. No problem with that. The outer needs to be everything else. The 2, the parentheses, and the negative 3. Okay, now we're ready to take the derivative. y prime equals. Make sure you write y prime once you start taking the derivative. What am I going to write first? Negative 6. Does everybody see where negative 6 is coming from? Negative 6, parentheses, what power? What does negative 3 become? Negative 2 or negative 4? Negative 4, very good. And the parentheses becomes the x squared plus 7x minus 1. Am I done? No. Nope. What, what I need to do now? Derivative of the inner function. 2x plus 7. Okay. Now, having shown you what I just did about cleaning up the one above it, see if you can clean that one up. See if you can clean that one up. Don't multiply anything together. Just put stuff next to stuff. You have to turn right back around. Yeah. You back where you started. Exactly.
Okay, look up here and see if you got what I got. Anybody have a question as to why I put everything where it goes? Be honest, ask me. How are we doing on this chain rule thing? We doing all right? Okay. Now, I have a lot more notes, but I think I'm only going to have time for one or maybe two more examples, and that's okay. So, sometimes the chain rule is used alongside the product or quotient rule. So you may have to use more than one rule in a problem, and we're going to do one that you do. I think I have enough lines left. I hope so. Y equals 5x squared parentheses 2x minus 1 to the third. Y equals 5x squared times 2x minus 1 to the third. Okay. One of the skills you need to develop as you learn to take derivatives is to recognize when you need to use product rule, when you need to use quotient rule, when you need to use chain rule. Okay. Does any, does, do you see the chain rule part of this problem? Is the chain rule part kind of flashing in your face? Mm -hmm. Where is it? What is it? What is it? The 2x minus 1 to the third. That's the chain rule part because it's a function inside of a function. Now, do you also see that there's product rule here? Okay, because I have two x's that I cannot multiply together. Anytime you have two x's that are multiplied but you can't combine them, it's product rule. Okay, so this one is product and chain rule both. Now, how do you know when to use which? The over, all encompassing, the, the function or the process that encompasses the entire problem is the product rule, okay? When we get to that one little snippet that has the chain rule in it, then we'll do the chain rule, okay? Now, here's the question. Do you remember the process for product rule? What's the, what's the little thing I told you to remember with ones and twos and Ds? 1D2. 1D2 plus 2D1. You need to remember that. 1D2 plus 2D1. Okay? So now, so Y prime equals, here we go. It's ready to go. 1 means copy the first one down. I can do that. 5X squared. Times D2. Now D2 is the derivative of this. Do I have to do anything special to this? Am I going to have to use the chain rule? Yes. To take the derivative of this, I have to use the chain rule. Okay, so now let's think outer, inner. For just the second part, the inner is which one? 2x minus 1, and the outer is what? Third power only. Now, the 5x squared is not part of this problem like the 2 was part of this one. Do you see why? Or do I need to explain that? Okay. Because I can't, I can't just multiply that down. When it, this is product rule. I'm in the process of product rule, so I don't use this part right here. The two is only the second function. Okay. So now, first step: take the derivative of the outer. What do you do? What's it going to be? Three, and then parentheses squared. Agreed and then put the 2x minus 1 in. Now you may put it in as you go, that's okay. Is that it? No, what else? Times 2. Times 2. Okay, so now I have just finished D2. That's D2. 1 D2. Okay, are we all clear on where that 2 came from? Okay, plus... What did we just say? 1 D2 plus 2 D1. So 2 means copy the second one down. 2x minus 1 cubed times d1. All right, what's the derivative of that 1? That's easy. 10x. Okay, now we got to clean this up. Oh, boy. Okay, now, clean up like you've probably never done before, so watch very carefully here how this works. y prime equals, look at everything in front of the plus sign. I've got a 5x squared. I've got a 3 
I've got a yucky parentheses and I've got a 2. Now I can multiply the 2, the 3, and the 5x squared together, can't I? What's that going to be? 30x squared. 30x squared, and then I've got this yucky parentheses, 2x minus 1 squared. Okay. That's cleaned up the first part. Plus, now over here, can't really multiply anything together, but I'm going to switch the places, and you'll see why in a second. 10x times 2x minus 1 cubed. Just switch them. That way the stuff that's not in a parentheses is in the front. All right. These are two separate entities right here. What can you factor out of these two parts right here? What can you factor out of this? 10x, right? And how many 2x minus 1s do they have in common? Two of them. So we're going to take out the 10x and two of the 2x minus 1s and then draw a bracket. I'll let you wait for me because this is kind of different. Now, my teacher taught me with the bracket, and I just found it to be very helpful as far as keeping everything straight. Okay, look at what's above it. Look at what you pulled out. What's left? 3x. Three. Three x, just from here to here. 3x. Do you all agree with that? Yes. 30x squared, 10x, and the 2x minus 1s are gone. Now the plus sign. Now what about between the last one here and what you pulled out? 2x minus 1. 2x minus one. Does it really need to be in a parentheses? Mm -hmm. Not really, but if you put it in there, that's okay. Last step, combine like terms in the bracket. And then we're done. Y prime equals 10x times 2x minus 1 squared times 3x plus 2x is 5x minus 1. And we are finished.